about this episode of The Communicator. I'm Jeff. I'm Chris. And today we're going to talk about power over Ethernet, which is something that a lot of people really don't pay much attention to when it comes to voice over IP systems or being able to power things like access points. We're going to talk a little bit about some of your options that you can you can look at instead of actually having to throw in a power over Ethernet switch, which essentially that is an option. But uh, what what do people need to go through or when they're when they're evaluating their options? Well, first thing you need to do is look at what exactly you're going to use it for. And like Jeff said, you can use it for uh, voice over IP phones, um, IP cameras, um, all manner of devices, anything that could be powered via Ethernet. Um, the question is, how do you get that power to it? Uh, and a lot of times you're putting something out there, a uh, phone at a guard station or something where you don't normally have um, 110 power run. So what you'll do is if you're within 300 meters of a network hub, you will use some sort of device to get that there. So what we're going to do is uh, your choices are you can use a single port uh, injector. And if you've only got, say, one camera going out there, that's a really good, cheap solution to do that. and It'll work great. Um, the problem is, what do you do the more devices that you want to want to connect? So there are times you'll scale it up. Like you may use one of these, which this is a, an industrial PoE switch. It's got five ports on it. One of which is your input port. It gives you four ports of power over Ethernet. And this one, being industrial, can handle uh, industrial atmospherics such as really high heat, really cold things like that. We've uh, put these in boxes and buried them out. So if we were extending out to cameras on a field, say they're on a, on a pole, so we can run the camera up, and, and these switches will actually survive that. Um, so you can get power as close as you can get it, run the rest of the Ethernet. Another option that you've got is, of course, we're putting in a POE switch, um, but there are times you might have a Layer 3 switch already in place. You've spent a lot of money on. It's fairly new. You don't want to replace it just to be able to power devices with it. So what you'll do is you'll incorporate a PoE patch panel. And what that does is it gives you, it's a patch panel with 24 ports that actually supplies 12 ports of PoE. They make a 48 model, it gives you 24 ports of PoE. So what happens is you come out of your standard patch panel into the bottom of it, then come back out of the top of it, out towards your device, and what it's doing is it's cycling that power mid-span uh, out on the second branch of the extension. So, and then you've got power pushed out over 24 ports to wherever you need to go. So that's a really good solution if you already have switch infrastructure that you don't want to replace. It'd be too costly to put in PoE switches, so you can just substitute a power a PoE patch phone. Most people don't even know that's an option. Well, before we go to the, the other option, I guess that uh, we're looking at doing, which were the power Ethernet bricks, you mm -hmm. know, so that we were talking about that would that's really popular a single for port. a single port, mm -hmm. which uh, would be really popular for access points. Absolutely. And then, of course, IP phones. And, of course, mm -hmm. we've seen them both ways where they have power you know, switches in the core area or they've got the bricks that actually mm -hmm. provide the power to the, um, to the phone or the access point or wherever it may be. What would most people bear in expense, if we go with the mid-span we were just talking mm -hmm. about, how does that compare to actually buying a power over Ethernet switch? Well, for, say, uh, you needed 24 ports of, of PoE, what you would do is say if you're buying a switch, you're probably talking, depending on the brand of the switch, um, $3,500 up to $6,000, depending on your uh, matching your layer three switching and all the other aspects that you need, where you could go, you know, $1,500, $2,000 for 24 ports uh, of full POE, uh, rather substitute that and put it on top of the switch that you've already got. Like you said, another option is those single ports, where if you're only talking one or two devices, um, you're just going to buy one of those. They're usually less than $100. You can put those out there, uh, power one device, and the, that, that injector may be in the core. And like you said, it may be right next to the phone also because there are several types where you will put it next to the phone. You will, will you know use what we call a wall work where it plugs directly into an outlet, it goes into this, and injects the power that way. So that's another really good option for, for single unit devices. So if you've got five or six something, there's, there's really no point in incurring the cost of the infrastructure of changing stuff out in the closet. So I, I guess the, the, the big thing that people need to understand is that unless you're actually going to run power outlets to each one of these locations, mm -hmm. and, and the two that really come to mind as far as being able to provide PoE would be for access points for wireless that could be in an office or in industrial location. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, IP phones, which a lot of them don't actually carry, although you can get power supplies for, for some, and they're, they're 
pretty much all over the board. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, you have to be able to provide power. Uh, right. DOE is you know something that a lot of people do actually with inside the core. So your options you're looking at doing were we, we talked about three. Mm -hmm. One would be the uh, power Ethernet switch that you're mm -hmm. able to get, and there's a lot of flavors there. Mm -hmm. You go Netgear, Cisco, Juniper, uh, just depending on what other network needs that you've got. And it's something that you can easily search for and you're mm -hmm. able to come up with. Uh, in 12, 24 port flavors, 48 port flavors, those are things mm -hmm. that you can look at. There's also core switches that have the blades that actually would Absolutely. have PoE, switch, uh, PoE ports that are actually within inside the blade. Um, so really, that is, like I said, it's all over the board, and price-wise, it's all over it's the board as well. On capacity. The second would be something like this that uh, Chris was talking about, which would be a uh, industrial PoE switch, which is great for your harsh environments mm -hmm. within, like uh, production uh, production facilities. facilities, exactly. So, and they, this one, if you guys can see here, where it's got the one input and then the four outputs, you're able to, to handle more than just one cameras, access points, whatever it may be. And of course, the last one we were talking about are power or Ethernet, what we like to call bricks, but they are actually injectors that can be done at the station side, station mm -hmm. level, where they can actually plug into their phone, uh, which we've actually worked with several solutions where uh, a customer didn't necessarily want to get rid of the uh, switch that they actually had, and what we had done is put bricks out in those locations to be able mm -hmm. to plug their phones up. So, One last thing that you may want to consider is what power requirements you have versus the device that you're doing. Most things are added to AF standard, which is up to 15.4 watts of power per port. Uh, the new standard that was ratified in 2009 is 802.8T, and that goes up to 25.5 watts, which there aren't a lot of devices right now that require that, but uh, you might want to do some homework on what, what are you going to power with it if it's a, a larger device, just to make sure that you're getting what meets the power standard that you need. So is that, uh, one more other thing I guess on that, is that considered PoE Plus? Yes. Okay, yes. so when you're actually doing your homework and you see the PoE or the PoE Plus, that's what Chris is talking about, is the, the increase in wattage and power exactly. uh, for that particular port. Although, like you said, there's not a lot out there we're trying yet. to scale back. All right, they're trying to scale yeah. back power as opposed to actually pushing more power. Exactly. So uh, that's something that you might uh, want to certainly take a look at, but be, pay attention to that PoE PoE plus. So, Chris, was there anything else you wanted to add regarding yeah. PoE? That's it for now. Okay, make sure that's what we're trying to tell you guys is to when you're when you're figuring out access points, um, so, uh, actually uh, uh, IP phones, that type of thing. Be sure you do your homework and how you're going to push power to these. Uh, certain devices. So Absolutely. with that, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you.